In the second part of our introduction to non-parametric statistics, I would like to present a little bit of the history of non-parametric statistics, as well as the term itself, non-parametric statistics, and taking a look where that came from. The first known use of non-parametric statistical analysis was in fact one of the first uses of statistical inference, and that occurred in 1710. The Scottish physician John Arbuthnot conducted the first known parametric statistical analysis, and the purpose of this analysis was to argue for divine providence based on the evidence that there is a balance in the number of males and females. I would invite you to take a look at this very interesting early study and use of inferential statistics as well as non-parametric statistics. But if you read nothing else, make sure you go down and read his conclusions in the last paragraph. Quite interesting. The formal beginnings of more modern non-parametric statistics started in around 1936 when Harold Hotelling and Margaret Richards Pabst published Rank Correlation and Test of Significance involving no assumption of normality. There you have a hint as to what we're going to do in non-parametric statistics. We're going to have no assumption of normality, which is different than we often see in many of the parametric statistics. In 1945, Frank Wilcoxon published Individual Comparisons by Ranking Methods. We are actually going to learn about this early method because it is still used as a very common non-parametric statistical method. So when you learn about the Wilcoxon test, you can keep in mind that this actually stems back to an article individual comparisons by ranking methods dating back to 1945. Obviously, much has been done since then to study the method and improve upon it, but this was the beginning of a method that we still use today. What about the term non-parametric? The first time it was used was in 1942 when Jacob Wolfowitz first coined the term non-parametric and did so in this article, Additive Partition Functions and a Class of Statistical Hypotheses. Specifically, note this paragraph. Most of these developments have this feature in common, that the distribution functions of the various stochastic variables which enter into their problems are assumed to be of a known functional form. We shall refer to this situation for brevity as the parametric case. That is, the parametric case is what you learn in your first statistics courses. And we will denote the opposite situation where the functional forms of the distributions are unknown as the non-parametric case. So now you see an expansion beyond what we heard from Hotelling and Pabst, that is, that we're not assuming normality, to now not assuming any particular distribution form when we look at what is called non-parametric statistics. In 1948, just six years after the first use of the term non-parametric, E.J.G. Pittman, who also developed non-parametric statistics that you will learn about, was at Columbia University giving a lecture when he said, they have been called non-parametric tests, but the name is not a good one, and it is hoped that someone will soon think of a much better name. Expanding on this view, in 1967, Gottfried Nuther, in a letter to the editor of the American Statistician, called for statisticians to adopt a new name. Later, in 1983, he wrote, The term non-parametric may have some historical significance and meaning for theoretical statisticians, 
but it only serves to confuse applied statisticians. So why do we use the term non-parametric? Because the statistic that we're interested in does not depend on a parameter. For example, the value of the sample mean, that is the statistic, depends on the population mean, that is the parameter, so it is parametric. Statistics that are based on ranks of observations do not depend on any population parameter, so we could think of these as non-parametric. The parameter of interest is not a parameter of the distribution of the data. For example, in parametric statistics, the mean is often what we're interested in, but the mean also happens to be a parameter of the normal distribution. In non-parametric statistics, when the mean is of interest, the distribution we study is not based on the normal distribution, so the mean is not a parameter of the distribution of the statistic that we are studying. And a third reason why we refer to it as non-parametric is that the models we build are not based on specified parameters, but rather are determined from the sample data that we can observe. For example, a histogram is a non-parametric estimate of a probability distribution. Well, this sounds good, so why is there concern about the term non-parametric statistics? Why not non-parametric? First, because the parameter of interest sometimes may be a parameter of the parent distribution. It's not always the case that these are separate from one another. Non-parametric methods that are used to study the population proportion pi use the binomial distribution, and as you will see, pi is a parameter of that distribution. So that distinction of a parameter of interest being divorced from the parent distribution might hold most of the time, but not all of the time. Non-parametric methods do depend on distributions with parameters. For example, the power of a non-parametric hypothesis test depends on the underlying distribution of the data and the parameters of that distribution. We may be able to study without taking into account the parameter of the parent distribution for much of what we do, but for some things we do, like power analysis, we do have to consider the parameter of the underlying distribution. And then some non-parametric models do make parametric assumptions. For example, non-parametric regression makes assumptions about the distribution of model residuals. There are some aliases that we can use when talking about non-parametric methods that may be more suitable than the term non-parametric statistics. For example, distribution-free methods. This is a better title because these methods do not rely on specifying the form or parameters of the distribution in order to make inferences, but it's not perfect. The title is imperfect because estimates and some inferences do depend on the underlying distribution. So it's not always the case we are dealing with distribution-free methods. Here's a better one. I like this one. Assumption-reduced methods. This is a better title because these methods require fewer assumptions than parametric counterparts. And that's one of the elements of non-parametric methods that I emphasize in my course. The fact that we do not have to have so many conditions for valid inference. Now, the title is imperfect because it assumes we can always make a comparison between parametric and non-parametric because if you're talking about assumption reduced, something has to be reduced. Some non-parametric methods do not have a parametric counterpart. Non-parametric methods are the only thing that we can do. So you can't very well say you're reducing assumptions for those methods when you didn't have a method to begin with. Another option that some statisticians recommend 
is to just avoid the distinction. Just call these statistical methods. I believe that we will find that these particular methods have certain properties that distinguish them from what we usually learn. And so a distinction probably is still to our benefit. And perhaps assumption reduced methods is the best thing that we can say. But for simplicity and because of tradition, I will continue to refer to our methods as non-parametric statistics.